and don't eat too many brownies. Hey, hey, hey. I thought, mm, these people are really crazy, you know, crazier and crazier. But I stopped laughing when I read the sixth letter. It was in Philip Rothschild's handwriting, too. Now, before I tell you what's in it, I want to say something. The Mormon doctrine and the witchcraft doctrine are almost identical in how the world began. According to the witches, Lucifer chose his son and his daughter, which were married, to come to the world and lead the rest of his little kids down here. Believe it or not, they're supposed to have landed at a flying saucer. And they landed here, and man was just more or less assuming their shape from apes, and they intermarried with man, and that's how, well, the original people were the witches that arrived, and their children became the witches, and the ones that they didn't marry with are the mortals. If you remember Bewitched, you remember the doctrine of, of witches and mortals. Now, that may seem a little crazy to you, but they firmly believe it. And that Adam, who had the ability to turn back into other lives again, like everybody else did, did not. Because when the evilness of man settled into the garden, and that's why the garden was bad, there's no original sin according to witches. And Lucifer had planned to come and live on this world along with his children, but he couldn't because of all the evilness of man. And when they say that, I almost feel like they want to write Christians sometimes, the, the way the doctrine goes. But Adam would come back to bring peace to the world and to unpollute it so his father could come back. Now, that's their doctrine. And when the sixth letter said, we have found Adam to be in the world and he is ready to make peace so that his father can return. I knew enough about revelations in the Christian Bible to say, hey, I'm in the wrong camp. Honest, it might help some of the others who aren't going to be honest. How many of you have ever had your fortune told, or even with playing cards as a joke at a party, or went to a fortune teller, or anything like this? How many of you have had it done? That's divination. Parapsychology calls it clairvoyancy. They like to change it a little. Okay? That's divination. That's fortune telling without the use of familiar spirits. Familiar spirits are spirit guides, the witches believe, have are spirits of people who have died. We know from the Word of God they're demonic spirits. They're the angels that fell with Lucifer. This is without them. This is using so-called EFT. They're inside them talking. They're giving them the knowledge, and the cards have definitions to add to it. Most people think when a person turns a card over, that card has a definition. Most people will tell you that use the tarot cards or playing cards, which, by the way, were made to cast spells with and tell fortunes before Hoyle ever came around and invented poker. Okay? In fact, there are some witches who won't use the tarot cards because the playing cards are older and more powerful. But they usually get psychic pictures besides the definitions. There's much power to that, and that's why God said, no, you don't need it. You have my word, you don't need this thing. The next one is an observer of time. Anybody can shout it out real quick. What's it mean? Astrology. How many of you right now believe astrology is all right for a Christian? Raise your hand. How many of us have followed astrology? Now, that means when the L.A. Times comes in, you just can't wait to open it up and look at it, okay? I do see the other sister around. She knows what I mean. She was addicted to it. All right. Is astrology addiction? It's addiction. She was hooked on it just the same as a heroin addict. She had to have a spirit cast out of her before she could stop reading it. She was that addicted to it. She went home and burned it all, right? That's when she got free and destroyed this stuff, Okay. There's demons involved in this. People argue with me that astrology is all right because the wise men were astrologers. No, they were following a star that had appeared in heaven. They were astronomers, not astrologers. Okay? Astrologers say that the stars destined you. Once you are born, you are going to stay that way. No matter what happens in your life, you can never change. The Word of God says that through the blood of Jesus Christ, you can change. That's why witches find it so hard to believe in the Christian faith because they don't understand it. There's no miracle of change in their life. That's why when they meet me, they can't understand it. I've got a picture in my billfold that we found by accident going through some belongings of myself about uh, a year after I became a grand druid. I want to show it to the pastor later. I didn't even recognize myself. That's the difference in myself now and then. They don't understand the miracle change. It changes you physically, it changes you spiritually. 
But according to astrology, that's impossible. You stop becoming a Scorpio and a Taurus when you become a Christian. I find it very beautiful when somebody walks up to me and says, what sign you are? I said, the sign of the blood of Jesus. That's all you have to say. You're not a set personality. If that's so, then the Word of God is a lie because it says you're supposed to grow in the Word of God and have the fruit of the Spirit, and that's the only sign you should have, is Galatians 5. All right? Or an enchanter, that's a hypnotist. How many of you have been hypnotized? I've heard Christians going around now, Christian ministers,